Did you know that NASA once had plans to build a rocket that was so enormous it could only be launched from the depths of the ocean? It may sound like something out of a science fiction movie, but it's true. This incredible project, known as the Sea Dragon, was designed to revolutionize space exploration. In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating history of the Sea Dragon, exploring its unique design, proposed capabilities, and why it ultimately never came to fruition. Get ready to dive into the depths of NASA's most ambitious underwater rocket project and discover what could have been the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe. In the 1950s and 1960s, the United States and the Soviet Union were in a heated space race, and the American rocket engineer Robert Truax saw an opportunity for innovation. He believed launching rockets from beneath the ocean's surface could offer numerous benefits, including reduced costs and increased safety. Truax's initial concept involved using a submarine to launch rockets, but eventually it evolved into the Sea Dragon. This massive two-stage rocket was designed to be launched directly from the ocean to create a cost-effective and reusable launch system. Although it was innovative at the time, the Sea Dragon project faced challenges like funding and technological limitations, which led to its shelving in the late 1960s. The Sea Dragon launch system was to consist of four key components that worked together to achieve a successful underwater rocket launch. The rocket, the launch platform, the buoyancy system, and the ignition and propulsion system. The Sea Dragon rocket was to be designed as a two-stage rocket, with a massive first stage providing the necessary thrust to propel the payload out of Earth's atmosphere, and a second, smaller stage guiding the payload into its desired orbit. The launch platform was a specialized, submersible structure that housed the rocket during the pre-launch phase, maintaining its correct orientation and stability as it descended into the ocean. The buoyancy system was to ensure that the rocket remained upright and stable during the underwater launch process. Using carefully designed ballast tanks and the buoyancy materials to control the rocket's position in the water column. The Sea Dragon was to utilize advanced ignition systems and propulsion technologies specifically designed for underwater use capable of withstanding the intense pressure and environmental conditions found beneath the ocean's surface. The Sea Dragon's design allowed for larger payloads and heavier rockets to be launched more easily than with traditional land-based systems, enabling more ambitious missions and the launching of larger space infrastructure components. Imagine a massive rocket that would make the Saturn V, the iconic rocket that took humans to the moon, look small in comparison. That was how the Sea Dragon rocket was proposed to look, an engineering marvel designed to be the largest rocket ever built. With a length of 492 feet, 150 meters, and a diameter of 76 feet, 23 meters, the Sea Dragon was a true giant of its time. It weighed over 18 million pounds, 8.2 million kilograms, when fully fueled. It used a combination of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to generate a tremendous amount of thrust through its nine engines, arranged in a unique pattern to provide the necessary power for liftoff and ascent. With a payload capacity of up to 550,000 pounds, 249,000 kilograms, the Sea Dragon was one of the most powerful rockets ever designed, capable of delivering payloads to a wide range of orbits, including interplanetary missions. The Sea Dragon project wasn't just just about launching rockets from underwater. It was meant to be a game changer for the entire space industry. One of the most significant benefits was the potential for cost reductions compared to traditional land-based launch systems. By leveraging the ocean's natural properties and eliminating the need for expensive infrastructure, such as massive launch pads and support equipment, the Sea Dragon system could have drastically reduced the expenses associated with rocket launches. This could have made space access more affordable and opened up new industries such as space tourism and the commercialization of space-based resources. But the benefits could have continued beyond there. The Sea Dragon project could have also offered considerable environmental advantages. Launching rockets from beneath the ocean's surface could reduce the ecological impact of rocket launches on terrestrial and atmospheric ecosystems. The ocean's natural property can help break up rocket components, reducing the production of space debris and the risk of collisions and damage to operational satellites. Although the impact it would have had on sea life is unknown. 
The Sea Dragon's underwater launch system could have also contributed to improved reliability and safety of rocket launches. The ocean's natural properties, such as buoyancy and pressure, help stabilize the rocket during launch. This increased stability could reduce the likelihood of launch failures and accidents. The ocean acts as a natural barrier, protecting people and the environment from potential rocket explosions. With the Sea Dragon's ability to conduct launches from various locations at sea, the system could have decreased the dependency on specific launch sites. This flexibility would have reduced the impact of weather-related delays and ensured that a wide range of orbital inclinations could be achieved more easily. Aerojet calculated that the cost of designing the rocket alone was estimated to be a whopping $2.8 billion in 1962. If we adjust for inflation, that figure would translate to roughly $22.7 billion in today's currency. And the cost of each launch? A staggering $300 million in 1962 would be equivalent to almost $2.4 billion today. That's an insane amount of money. The Sea Dragon project never came to fruition for several reasons. Firstly, launching a rocket from underwater presented several technical challenges, including the need for complex waterproofing, corrosion resistance, and the development of systems to manage the transition from underwater to airborne flight. Moreover, during the 1960s, NASA's primary focus was on the Apollo program, which aimed to land astronauts on the moon, leaving little support for experimental concepts like the underwater Sea Dragon. Additionally, alternative launch systems were under development, such as the Saturn V rocket which ultimately became the workhorse of the Apollo program. These alternatives were more conventional and better understood, making them more attractive options for NASA to invest in and develop. Also, when the U.S. government discovered the Apollo program's cost in 1964, it became apparent that there would be no budget for another large-scale project. If the U.S. government had given NASA the green light to send people to Mars after the Apollo program, the Sea Dragon rocket project could have been justified, but that never happened. However, NASA shut down Apollo in 1973 as unprofitable and of little scientific value. This coincidentally discouraged NASA from pursuing the Sea Dragon project. Lastly, the underwater Sea Dragon concept required significant logistical support, including ships and submarines for transportation, tracking, and recovery operations. The costs and complexities associated with these operations may have outweighed the potential benefits of the sea-launched rocket system. Ultimately, the Sea Dragon remained in the concept stage as it was deemed unnecessary for the space programs of either NASA or the military. The Saturn V was deemed more than adequate for the Moon program. So what came instead of the Sea Dragon? While the largest rocket ever had to be abandoned and never flew in real-life history due to its complexity and impracticality, the idea of launching rockets from the sea was eventually put into practice. In 1964, a floating spaceport called San Marco was created off the coast of Kenya. This remarkable feat consisted of two oil platforms converted into a launch pad, mission control center, and two logistics support vessels. From San Marco, researchers launched the American Scout vehicle for over 20 years, and the communication station on land still tracks satellites to this day. But that's not all. In 1995, Sea Launch was born from a four-nation consortium. They successfully launched their unique Zenit 3SL rocket modified for sea launches for 19 years, making 36 launches with only three failures. Elon Musk even praised it as the best rocket in the world after his Falcon 9. To conclude it all, NASA's underwater Sea Dragon rocket, which was an ambitious and innovative concept for the 1960s, ultimately failed to come to fruition due to a combination of factors. Despite the Sea Dragon's unrealized potential, its unique concept remains a testament to the creativity and vision of engineers like Robert Truax, who dared to think beyond the boundaries of conventional rocketry. In the years since the Sea Dragon proposal, the space industry has continued to innovate and develop new technologies to reduce the cost costs, and complexities of space launches. As we look back on the history of space exploration, the Sea Dragon serves as a reminder of the importance of embracing bold ideas and seeking alternative solutions to the challenges of space travel.